Hi, for the past few days, I've been getting quite a few notifications on my GitHub profile as well as in my mailbox. These notifications are related to the outdated libraries or packages I'm using in my public repositories. And uh, they tell me that there are updates available for these repositories. I'm sure you're also using different packages or different dependencies in your projects. If you're using .NET, then you might be using NuGet as a package manager. If you're working with Java, then it is uh, Maven or Gradle that you might be using. For Python, it could be pip. If you're working on front end or uh, let's say Node, Node.js, it could be Node package manager or NPM. Uh, you get the idea, right? Uh, it's about managing the dependencies that are used within your project. We use these package managers, but how do we know if the dependency that we added to our project is the latest one? Sometimes we go to Stack Overflow or any online forums looking for solutions and we find these kind of references or dependencies mentioned there. And we copy the code and we paste it in our application. But is that really the latest version of the dependency? And let's say today we add a dependency. After some time, there might be an update available for that dependency. How can we know that we are using the latest version? That is the topic for today's discussion. My name is Nilesh and today we are going to talk about a bot. It's called Depend a Bot, which integrates with GitHub. And it's all about automating the dependency of updates. And it's quite uh, integrated into GitHub. It's built into the GitHub. Let's head over to GitHub and see how we can use Depend a Bot to automate our dependency management. So here I am logged into my GitHub profile and you can see under the notifications that I have many notifications here, which they come from a Depend a Bot, a bot service. And they tell me things like uh, there is a repository under my profile. It's called Tech Talks Azure Container Apps Demo. And it gives things like uh, it needs a bump up of the Prometheus.NET uh, dependency, which I'm using. There is ASP.NET Core dependency from 5.0.2 to 7.0. And like this, there are many other dependencies which are listed here, which means that these are already outdated. I'm using an older version and uh, there is an update available. This is automatically created. There is a pull request created for me to review and to integrate that. When was the last time you checked your dependencies? So in this demo, I'm going to show how Dependabot can do it easily for us. I do it quite regularly, but instead of doing it manually, which is quite cumbersome, I use Dependabot, which is bot, to do this automatically for me on a daily basis. And I know on a daily basis, which are the dependencies which have been outdated. So let's look at one of the uh, things or one of the pull requests and see how to configure this. How do we get started? And what information do we have? So when I go into this repository of mine, the Tech Talks Azure Container Apps demo, uh, we can see that there are four pull requests here. And these four pull requests, these are all related to the dependencies. All these pull requests are automatically created by Dependabot. And uh, let's see how we can configure this. How do we get started? First thing is we go into the settings and we look for this code and the security or code security and analysis section. Under that, there is a section related to depend a bot. You can learn about depend a bot by going to the documentation, but I will show you some things which are already configured for my repository and we'll also see how to do it for the new repo. So there are three things which we can do. First one is the alerts. Uh, depend a bot can alert us if there are any vulnerabilities or if there are any dependencies which are uh, available for our uh, dependencies in the projects that we are working and which are configured to use Dependabot. Second thing is Dependabot security updates where uh, it can find out the vulnerabilities which are exposed and it can uh, highlight to us, it can alert us. And then there is the version updates where even if there are no security updates or if there are no vulnerabilities, there could be an updated version of the dependency available. Say for example, I am in .NET, I am using uh, one of the dependency, which is, uh, let's take the commonly used one. Say for example, the parsing of JSON, we use this Newton soft library. 
if we are using let's say 12.0.1 and there is 13.0 version available in depend bot version updates we will get alerts regarding this in order to configure this uh, we go into the configure section and it creates a setting this is configured as a github action so if you have worked with uh, github and you know the automation part of github there is this dot github folder which is created and under this we can put configurations for different actions we want to run as part of github actions workflow and the name of the file has to be exactly depend about dot yaml or yml it contains the configuration for what package management we are using or what package system we are using ecosystem there could be more than one package ecosystem used within our project in my case i am working with net this particular repository is a net repository so i am specifying new get and then we specify other metadata like what is the directory where the packages are uh, stored what is the schedule at which uh, interval the frequency or at what schedule the dependa bot has to go and check our dependencies and then i'm also overriding one of the default setting which is set to uh, create the pull request open pull request by default dependa bot will create five pull requests per repository but i'm going to create uh, this as 10 or i'm going to override this as 10 once we have this then uh, once uh, this particular file is added to our github folder dot github uh, action folder on a daily basis or whatever frequency we specify depend a bot will scan our repositories and it will report it in the pull request so let's look at the details of what is provided in the pull request uh, let's look at the first one which is bump prometheus or let's look at the ASP.NET core uh, which is the uh, sentry so we can see that the description says that uh, bumps the Sentry ASP.NET Core from 3.13.0 version to 3.23.1 version and it gives us the release notes for this particular version. We can look at what are the features which have been added, what are the bug fixes which got added into this particular release of this dependency which is the Sentry ASP.NET Core and we can also look at the change log. Again, this all information comes from the release note, which helps us to identify what are the changes related to this particular upgrade of the dependency. And then uh, it tells us the compatibility, whether it is compatible with our current version or not. Uh, if there is any breaking change, uh, we can see that in the description. So in the next one, I will show uh, how to look at or one of the dependency which had a breaking change. Now uh, here you can see that there are some closed pull requests as well because this particular thing was reported 10 days ago, the uh, upgrade of the version. Uh, it was upgrade, uh, uh, there was a version upgrade available from 3.13 to 3.23.0 but this got closed because there was a patch or there was another update with 3.23.1. So again, depend about is quite intelligent enough to understand that uh, if there are multiple updates to the same dependency, it will close the old pull request and it will create another one on top of the older pull request to uh, cater or to target the latest version of the dependency. So I can go and I can merge this pull request. It is as simple as that. Once I merge the pull request, uh, it will create again using the automation uh, comment for the uh, pull request merge. And if I say confirm merge, it will go ahead and it will merge this pull request. And we can see that uh, this will be closed. And if I want to delete the branch, I can delete this branch. Uh, it will also be deleted automatically once the uh, workflow runs, GitHub Actions workflow. So you can go back and see for this repository under the actions, what is happening. We will see that uh, the commit was done about 25 seconds ago and the GitHub action workflow is running. And now there are only three pull requests remaining out of the four. So there were four dependencies in that project, which were updatable and I closed one of the pull requests. So now three are remaining. We can also look at it from another angle. Once the configuration is done, once the dependent bot is configured to work with our repository, 
we can go into the insights and we can look at the dependency graph to identify what are the dependencies we have in our project and which are the ones which uh, depend a bot can update. So here in my project that I'm referring, there are two sub projects or in the solution, there are two projects. One is the uh, Tech Talks consumer. The other one is Tech Talks producer and the consumer has two external dependencies. Uh, one is referring to dapper.net SDK and the other one is referring to the swashbuckle ASP.NET Core. Uh, the version of Dapper is 1.9 and for the ASP.NET Core it is 6.4. Same way there are eight dependencies in the MQ producer and we can see this list uh, from our dependencies uh, configuration. This comes from the project file. So if I go into VS Code and I look at the uh, dependencies that we have added in the package references, this is exactly the same information. So the consumer has got this 1.9 and 6.4 version of the dependencies and the producer, the eight dependencies which are shown are what we have referenced here as part of the package reference via the new get package. And then under depend a bot, we can also find out when was the last time this check happened. If we go back to the configuration, we can see that depend bot is configured to run uh, every day. The frequency is specified in my configuration as daily. And last time it ran was two hours ago. So after 22 hours, again, it will run and I will get to know if the fix that I put in the pull, uh, pull request that I merged was able to uh, update to the latest version or not. Now, uh, let's look at the breaking changes that I was talking about. So this was a straightforward uh, scenario where uh, we found that there was a dependency update available and we managed to merge that. In the Prometheus one, if I look at this pull request, we can go into the change log and we can look at the details. In the details, we can find that if there are any breaking changes, the release notes will have that information. And we have to be careful in such cases that before merging, we need to be sure that this breaking change is not going to have any impact on our application. So this is the existing repository. Now let's go and see how we can configure it for a brand new repository or a repository which does not have depend about configure. So you also get to understand how this needs to be configured. So I have this repository called as YouTube subtitles generator, which doesn't have depend about configure. So I'll show you how to configure it for this repo. Let's go into the settings. Let's go into the code security and analysis section. And we can see that right now, uh, all the three sections related to depend about are shown as uh, to be enabled. So let's go and enable the alerts first. So the alerts have been enabled. Uh, alerts can be configured at different level. So I recommend that you go into this configure alert notification and uh, you can customize the type of alerts that you want. In my case, I have configured it to be notified in my uh, GitHub profile as a notification as well as uh, email notification. So I'll show you how the email notification looks like. We are going to enable the security updates and we are also going to enable the version update. So version update is the one that I was showing just now where it creates a depend about file and in this it will give us uh, this file. So uh, it will automatically generate this file and we need to see what package ecosystem we have to specify. By default, there is no package ecosystem uh, configured because uh, depend about doesn't know what kind of uh, solution we are using or what programming language we are using, what package manager we are using for our solution. So there are different package managers which can be uh, configured or which can be used as part of depend about. This is the list starting with bundler, cargo, composer, docker. Uh, there is the go modules, gradle, maven, npm, uh, nuget. So in our case, since it is a .NET project, I'm going to use nuget as the package manager. 
So we specify NuGet as the package manager. Directory, I'm going to start from the top level of my directory structure. And I want to schedule this instead of weekly, daily. And then I commit this file into my main branch. Once this is committed, we can see that it goes into the .github folder and under that, there is the dependabot.yml. So it will go and start scanning my repository or my project for any updates for my dependencies. So you can see that it is quite easy uh, to get started with the configuration part. Now let's go back and switch to the uh, other notification which I said, uh, which is the email notification. Along with the notification in GitHub portal or the profile, we also get email notification. This can be helpful for people who are not actually doing the code changes, but they still want to be notified about any updates which are available for the uh, dependencies that we are using. So here is an example. If I just search for Depender Bot in my email, these are the different email notifications I have got at the same time when those pull requests were created and this contains the same information. So it will contain the change log, it will contain the uh, version history, what updates are available. All that information that we saw in the portal is also available in the email here or also notified to me in the email. And it also tells me how I can trigger depend about actions uh, in the PR. I can use different comments uh, to do different actions on that PR, like rebasing the PR, merging the PR, squashing it, uh, all different kinds of activities that we can do with the normal PR. We can also do with this pull request, which is raised automatically by the uh, depend about. So with that, we saw that it is quite easy to configure depend about for new projects and it is quite helpful to use it for the existing projects. Let's see some of the advantages of using Dependabot. First thing is we get these automated alerts. Every time there is a dependency used in our project and we can configure that dependency or manage that dependency using any of these uh, package managers which are supported by Dependabot, we will get updates automatically. We will get notifications about the updated version of the dependency. The second thing is the automated PR. We don't have to uh, do manual changes ourselves. Whatever package managers are supported, Dependabot will raise a pull request automatically for those updates to the dependencies and we can merge that pull request as I demonstrated earlier. There is also automated updates for the security issues. So in the configuration, we saw that there were three sections, one for notification, one for version updates and one for the security related ones. So anytime there is a vulnerability, like log4j uh, vulnerability which occurred recently or there are other vulnerabilities which are reported from time to time. If there is a fix for that vulnerability, vulnerability available, uh, this bot can again raise an automated pull request for that. Be careful here that it is only going to update the uh, package reference or the dependency. It is not going to test the changes for us. As we saw, there were some breaking changes in one of the dependency. It is the responsibility of the developers or the application team and whatever workflow uh, it is used in the organization to make sure that after upgrading the dependency, the application works as expected. So there is that step of making the change and then testing the change to make sure the upgrade of the dependency does not have any impact on the functionality of the application. That is very important to understand. Next, if you want to learn more, I would like to give some references for you. In the MS Learn portal, which is uh, the Microsoft learning uh, portal, you, we have a module which is less than half an hour. You can spend time of the day, spend just about 30 minutes, uh, less than 30 minutes of your day to learn about configuring Dependabot for security updates on your GitHub repo. And uh, once you have learned this, I'm sure you would have other things that you want to learn or other things that you want to implement. Uh, if you have anything that you found useful from this 
uh, demo that I showed or if you know any other tool which does something similar or better than Depender Bot, please feel free to put it in the comment section. I would like to know more about it. If you are interested in uh, learning more about improving the quality of the software and how different tools can help you that, on this channel I have done previously other videos, things like uh, GitHub Superlinter which helps to lint your code for standards and for best practices uh, for various different languages. I also did a video earlier about code quality, how we can use Sonar Cloud and GitHub Actions to improve the code quality, to look for the code bugs, vulnerabilities which the Sonar Cloud can scan and how we can invoke that or how we can automate that using GitHub Actions. Feel free to watch those videos to learn more about improving the overall code quality of your application. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time, code with passion and strive for excellence.